Hello everyone, I hope you're doing great. A while ago, I welcomed popular scrimba teacher and react supernova, Bob Zirol, onto the scrimba live stream. We talked about a ton of amazing topics, such as how to avoid tutorial hell, how to not fear stack overflow, and of course, react. We know you're busy people, so we've condensed that one hour stream down into our top eight tips from the show for you to enjoy right here. Let's get into it. Do you think React is hard to go on or is it easy to learn? And should I have a go at it? I don't have a whole lot of comparison, like anything to compare it to. I think React is a lot easier to build interactive websites in than pure HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But you certainly should learn JavaScript well before you start React. You don't have to be a world renowned expert or be paid writing JavaScript to know it well enough, but you definitely need to know a good amount of JavaScript before you start React. I mean, how well are we really talking here? Do you think completing pairs course would be enough or do you need a bit more than that? If by completing you mean doing all the exercises, challenges and projects, then yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, just watching them alone, no. You have to do the the challenges and the exercises. And eventually, when we add in the self-assessments, you have to be able to pass those self-assessments. But you, know, you don't have to know a lot of the deep down parts of JavaScript, even like paradigms, uh, coding styles, things like functional programming, closures. Some of those topics I would consider more understanding perfectly like this, object creation, object.create, prototypes. Um, there's a lot that you can go into in JavaScript that you don't necessarily need to be like an expert on in order to start React. I didn't learn it that way and it was fine. I learned things like let const and var, how to use objects, um, methods, functions, callback functions, promises, and other ES6 kind of syntactical things like arrow functions and, and whatnot, that's probably good enough to get you into React as long as you understand those topics. Will React sharpen your JavaScript since it's a library to JS? Yes, I still recommend being fairly sharp in your JavaScript beforehand, but one thing that React will help do is solidify reasons to use some of that JavaScript. I remember thinking that topics like map and reduce and filter were scary and really hard to understand. And it wasn't until I really dove into React that the reason to use those started to make more sense to me. And then I found tons of reasons to use them outside of React. I believe that React will help sharpen your JavaScript skills. Class-based <laughs> React, probably even more so, but uh, I still wouldn't recommend starting with classes in React. But learning class-based React helped me understand things like prototypes, the prototype chain, object creation, the this keyword and stuff like that. What have you seen that commonly makes people fail at coding? The biggest thing that I've seen is when someone has a lack of reason or or like purpose. At vSchool, I used to interview all of the incoming students and it would always raise, not a red flag, but it'd be like a warning sign for me when their reason for wanting to learn to code was because maybe a family member told them like, hey, you should do this because I do it. Or um, or they said like, hey, I've heard there's there's good money in coding. And so that was like their reason for going to code. And I did find that students whose purpose was just to make money and not because they intrinsically enjoyed coding tended to struggle a lot more because they didn't have like the drive, I guess. It, not even drive, they just, it, it didn't interest them. People mm -hmm. will tend toward the things that interest them, which is why it's really hard to form new habits sometimes. Another thing I saw a lot of was a lack of, so to speak, skin in the game. We'd have like moms and dads whose uh, families were riding on them succeeding <laughs> and oh, wow. they yeah. usually did really well because yeah. they, they had a lot uh, riding on it. And then we had a number of students who, I mean, when I was at vSchool, it's, it's an expensive course. And so when they weren't paying for it, like maybe their parents were paying for it or something, a lot of times they struggled uh, just because they didn't, they didn't have the skin in the game. But yeah. I, I found much less of a correlation between something that you might call like a natural ability and their success um, and a much stronger correlation between someone's grit, uh, tenacity and, and like the, the drive behind them that helped them succeed. What can make people succeed at coding? I think just being disciplined, even if you don't feel like a particularly disciplined person, just acting disciplined, like pretending to be disciplined. And what I mean by that is things like setting a schedule and sticking to it. Block off part of your calendar for learning to code. If you 
don't have a full-time job and you're learning to code to get a full-time job, then learning to code is your full-time job, like nine to five. I mean, take take breaks and, and work on stuff. Don't just try to burn through material, but be doing something actively. Set your phone aside, remove distractions. There's tons of apps and, and uh, browser extensions that will remove distractions for you. Tell your family or your roommates or whoever you're living with to like, don't bug me during this time. Just kind of doing those disciplined things like shower every day. You know, if you, if you don't have a job, it's really easy to, you know, not get ready for the day, but your mm -hmm. mind just works better. If you do, somebody mentioned, how do you avoid tutorial hell in the comments? Just be building stuff. One of the cool things that we're starting to do and that I'm going to be doing with this react course is self-assessment. Um, projects yeah. where we will not be giving you the solution, which effectively removes those training wheels and uh, makes it so that you have to think for yourself, like, can I do this or no? If you can't, that's a sign that you're, you're stuck in tutorial hell. And so hopefully these will help break that mold out a little bit. So not being in tutorial hell, doing things yourself, building things, hands on the keyboard, that's going to be a great recipe for success. I've a few times had a problem where I was building something for this reason and I find it quite easy to get into doing that but then if I get a bug or something I can't do I end up spending a lot of time on it if I don't find the solution I'm kind of stuck what would you recommend in that case like are you talking about like a technical roadblock like you know what you want to accomplish but you don't yeah. know how to accomplish it uh, communities. I found so yeah. much help. I've joined so many different Slack communities, uh, a few different Discord communities, and it's amazing how many people are like at Scrimba, we've got community heroes that just seem they're, they're online. They answer lots of questions. They help people. It's amazing how many communities there are that have people just willing to help. If you're fortunate enough to live in a local community that has a lot of developers, um, like I live in Salt Lake City, Utah, which for an outsider sounds like it's kind of in the boonies, but it's actually one of the tech hub spots of the world. And there's meetups um, and a, a really thriving JavaScript community, Java community, Python community, all of which have their own Slack and Discord channels. So just asking your questions there, you're most likely going to get help. Sometimes people will even like set up a call with you to, to walk you through it. It's, it's really amazing. I had someone help me the other day, actually learn something new about a Z index. And I would even turn to those those communities before I turn to Stack Overflow to ask a question on Stack Overflow. I mean, I would search for it, you know, on Google mm -hmm. and and look at answers on Stack Overflow, but if I'm not finding anything there, I would rather turn to a community like on Slack than to post my own question on Stack Overflow. Tom chances I would go through the fires of hell before posting my own question on Stack Overflow. Completely agree. As long as you adhere to the the basic, I mean, don't say like, what's wrong with my code? As long as you adhere to the basic tenets of Stack Overflow, then it can be fine. I have a lot of posts on Stack Overflow that have helped a lot of people. Oftentimes it's me asking a question and then answering my own question later when I figure out the answer somewhere else. Mm. I'll even have comments that say like, thanks for coming back and, and updating this. That's It's like really helpful to the community. So it certainly, it's like Twitter. It's got a toxic side and it's got a, a nice side. That's it for our top eight tips from Bob Zero. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit subscribe for more Ask an Expert live streams and top tips videos like these. Catch you next time.